Okay. Hello everybody, welcome to a Thursday afternoon. It is not a sunny afternoon at the craft table, which is perfect because yesterday we got sort of uh, blitzed out with the sunlight. It was nice and sunny and warm, but it was difficult to see everything. But today, today it is that magical kind of spring rain where it just sort of drips down everywhere. It, there's this lovely plip plop sound in the background and uh, there's a nice diffused light so I think we should be able to see everything very nicely today. Anyway, Mr. and Stitches, you can take us to the craft table when you are ready. Welcome everybody. I hope you can hear us all right. I'm going to try not to um, scream and yell today because <laughs> we are still having some issues with our uh, equipment and I think my my microphone might be a little on the sensitive side and I am kind of a, a loud talking person anyway I'm sure if that doesn't come as a surprise to any of you but <laughs> I am going to try not to scream in everybody's ears today anyway welcome it is Thursday we are going to make our summer breeze kerchief today live I love I'm just loving these live crochet alongs um, the original tutorial if you need it, if you need to jump ahead, or if you need to catch up at the be the beginning, we'll have it linked in the description box down below. In addition to the yarn I'm using and the hook, and I'm just going to quickly go through um, the hooks and the yarns that you can use for this project, and then we're going to get right into it. So very quickly, I've got my scissors, uh, a yarn uh, stitch marker. You might find a stitch marker handy. You may not need it. I I have one just in case. Your yarn needle. Um, I think it's good to have a measuring tape. Anytime you make a wearable, measuring tapes are very handy. So I've got a measuring tape and I'm using a four millimeter or a G6 hook. That's what I'm using today because I'm using a three weight yarn. This is also called a lightweight yarn or a DK weight. Specifically, it's a Karen cotton ripple cake. This is 100% cotton and this is the floor, the the flower, wildflower colorway. I think it's gorgeous. It is so pretty. I've got pinks and greens and blues and yellows in here. It really does look like wildflowers. So this is going to make a perfect uh, kerchief. Now in the original tutorial, we used a size one fingering weight acrylic yarn and a much smaller hook. That works. Um, a size two weight yarn and a uh, any really you can use any hook with this project that gets you the kind of gauge or tension you want and you can use any yarn weight which is a one a two a three or a four I wouldn't go any higher than that um, when you get into the chunky Aran bulky weight yarns it's not really a very cool hair kerchief anymore now you're kind of getting into kind of hat territory so I would stick to four weights and under you can use any hook that makes a comfortable stitch. You don't want tight tension and you don't want it to be too, too loose. And then we do have a kind of a cheat sheet of notes that we recommend hooks um, and yarn weights over on the community tab that we posted last night. Um, so you can pop over there if you need a little bit more help. But really, once you choose your yarn, um, you just want to do the first two rows of the pattern with your chosen hook and if you don't feel like it's too tight or too loose then you're good to go. The gauge is not important. You can repeat this pattern until you have a kerchief the length and depth that you want and we're adding built-in ties so there's a lot of flexibility here. So don't worry too much about your gauge. You just want stitches that aren't too tight or too loose. Okay here we go. I'm going to actually undo my cake from the outside. Normally I I take cakes apart from the inside but this is just so pretty. I know it sounds a bit dorky but I just kind of want to enjoy how this cake looks all together for longer so I'm just going to let my yarn unwind from the outside which is fine because it's a cake it's not going to roll around it's just going to just kind of keep pulling from the outside so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my cake just to the side. I'm going to move the rest of my accoutrement to the side. I'm going to stick my hook here 
And let's jump into it. The Summer Breeze Kerchief is based on the corner to corner pattern. So nice and easy. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. I'm going to get a few stitches into this and then I'll uh, get my eyeballs into the chat and see how everybody's doing on this. At least it's rainy here. I was kind of eyeballing the chat just before we got going. I know some people are having nice weather, um, but I mean, it's the globe, right? You can probably probably pick any kind of weather and somewhere somebody is getting it. So <laughs> We're going to chain six to begin. Once you've chained six, this is how we begin our first block in the corner to corner project. Skip the first three chains from the hook, find the fourth chain and double crochet into it. And the three chains that you skipped actually counts as a double crochet, but we will be referring to it as the chain three as we go through the project, just because it's sort of easier to identify that way. You're gonna double crochet into each of the remaining two chains so what you'll have is a chain three and three double crochets. And this is how row one looks when you're done. That's your little block. So a chain three and then three double crochets. If you're still picking yarn and hook size, you want to do this row and row number two, and then get an idea of if it doesn't, shouldn't feel tight and it shouldn't be too loose. And by loose, you shouldn't have giant gaps in between your stitches. By tight, it shouldn't feel like you can't move it or squish it. So uh, that's, that's my best description of the kind of tension you want for this pattern. So that's row one complete. Row two, we chain six. Every row begins with a chain six in this pattern. So you chain six, skip the first three chains, find the fourth, double crochet into that fourth chain from the hook, double crochet into each of the next two chains. And then this is the magic of the corner to corner. Hold on to that block you just completed. This is the block from row one. And this is where a lot of people get kind of confused. You want to take that block and whoop, flip it up so that it's pointing up. Your chain three, and this is why I said I'm going to be referring to it as the chain three, should be over here. It's furthest away from you. So if it if you haven't flipped it, your chain three will be facing towards you. You want to flip it so that the chain three is facing away from you. Then you're going to slip stitch into the space. So there's a space between the chain three and the double crochet. Flip your hook in there. Slip stitch. That anchors your block that you just made to the block from the first row chain three. Chain three counts as a double crochet, but we're always going to just refer to it as a chain three. And then into the same space, so don't worry about splitting the stitch or looking for chains, just into that space, you're going to double crochet three times. So a chain three and three double crochets equals one block. And that's what the corner to corner is built on, blocks. And then this is what you've got at the end of row two. So this is row one down here, and this is row two. Row one has one block in it. Row two has two blocks in it. Row three will have three blocks. Row four will have four blocks. It is so easy to know what row you're on in this particular pattern. All you have to do is count the blocks. And your little tail where you started will always be facing at the very bottom point, so you'll always know where you started. That's Row number one, here's row number two. And of course, everything's going to go on an angle. Row number three, we start with a chain of six because every row begins with a chain six. Skip the first three chains, find the fourth, double crochet into it. Double crochet into each of those next two chains. And don't worry about the rest of your project flip flopping around because once you get to the last double crochet, you just grab your project and flip it so that the points are facing up. Consider it like a mountain. The points always go up. Nico, I saw that. <laughs> Thank you, Nico, for buying a membership. And Ellen has won it. Congratulations, Ellen. Thank you, Nico. <laughs> 
Once you have completed a block and you've flipped your work so that the points are facing up, so mountain points face up, you can also find the chain three. The chain three should always be facing away from you. If it's facing towards you and the bottom point is up, you're upside down. You want to flip it so the points are up and the bottom point where your little tiny tail is, is facing towards you. Find the space between the chain three and the double crochet of the very next block. Stick your hook in it. This will get very, very simple once you get comfortable. Slip stitch to join that anchors your block and then we create another block chain three and three double crochet into the same space. I've got to unwind a little more yarn now for my cake. There we go. Oh, I love this minty color. That's block number two. And now points up, tail down. Here's the chain three. There's the space between the chain three and the double crochet. I'm going to slip my hook in there, slip stitch, and build the last block of row three, which is the third block. Chain three, three double crochet, all into the same place. And like we said, we've got the original tutorial linked down below. So if you need to back up or move forward, maybe you're moving along a little faster, it's right there for you. So here's the little tail. That means that that's row one. Also, that's one block. So that's row one, two blocks, row two, three blocks, row three. Points always face up, tail always faces down. We're already three rows in, and at this point, you should know whether or not you're using the right hook for your yarn. And by the right hook, I mean you've got kind of a flexible fabric, but it's not too holy. And uh, that's all you need to know. You can use really any hook that's comfortable with your yarn. Because the cotton ripple cake I'm using has a bit of a wiggle to it, um, I wanted, yesterday when we were fiddling with the yarns and the hook, I wanted to make sure I had a hook that was big enough that it could accommodate the thicker parts of this yarn and not make the stitches feel too tight or crammed. So I think the 4 millimeter or the G6, also known as, is a good choice for this particular yarn. I'm going to have a sip of water and get an eyeball into the chat here. Hello everybody! Welcome family! Thanks everybody for coming and hanging out with us today. I love the corner to corner pattern. It is so versatile. You wouldn't think that it necessarily would be, but it really is. You can make really great triangles, rectangles, or squares with it. It's really cool. Uh, all right, row four. Every row begins with a chain six. This creates the foundation of our first block. You always skip the first three chains from the hook. You focus on the last three chains, double crochet into the fourth, the fifth and the sixth or last chain and that chain three and the three double crochets creates your block. When you finish your block, take your work, make sure that the points are facing up, the little tail is facing down, this is a mountain, points face up. Find the next block, look for the chain three and the double crochet next to it and you're putting your hook right through that space. Don't worry about splitting a stitch or anything. Slip stitch, that anchors your block. Chain three. And work three double crochet all into the same space. Hello everyone! Deanna's drinking Kool-Aid. Well that is something I haven't thought of doing in a long time. <laughs> Talk about nostalgia! <laughs> Chain three and three double crochet worked into the same space. Is one block. You find the next block, you look for the chain three and the double crochet and the space between them, you stick your hook in there, slip stitch, that anchors your block, chain three, that starts the next block, and three more double crochet into the same space, finishes the block. And another one. Here's the last block, there's the chain three and the double crochet and the space between. I stick my hook in there, slip stitch. That anchors that last block I just made. Chain three and three double crochet all into the same space. And I've got row four complete. Row four has four blocks in it. 
Ah, oh, it's minty, it's ripply, it's soft, it's cotton. I am already four rows in with this size three yarn, and let's see here. I am almost four inches across, just a little less, so three and a three quarter inches or nine and a half centimeters. So I've got a ways to go uh, for an adult sized kerchief. Now, this is completely up to you. Very, very flexible pattern. I'm aiming for around 15 to 16 inches across the top row, so across the top edge. For children, eh, 13 to 14 inches across there. Um, if you've got lots of voluptuous hair or you've just sort of got a, a larger noggin, then you can make it 16 to 17 inches. But remember, we're putting in ties. So um, if you're making it for yourself, the best thing to do is just keep trying it on. This is going to be the part, um, we will be squaring it off, but this long edge is the part that kind of goes across your head um, closest to your forehead. And this is the bit that hangs down the back. I'm sure that's probably obvious to you, but just in case it isn't. <laughs> So that's the end of row four. I'm going to start another row. Every row begins with a chain six. You skip the first three chains, double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains, and that creates block number one. Hi everybody, I hope you're all having a nice Thursday. I'm going to Soon here, once I'm away to the races, I'll be able to pay a little more attention to the chat. Mr. and Stitches is here. I know it's being very quiet. But it's the rain. Do you notice how the rain just kind of makes everything feel a little more quiet or calm? I don't know. I think it's magic. I really do think it's magical. I'm uh, I'm here lurking. The Mr. is lurking. I'm a lurker today. Caitlin's off Enjoying the, the show. <laughs> um, I would love a tech check on my mic volume if sure. uh, everyone doesn't mind. And now that we've got the pattern established, let's also get a poll going. So tech check for the mister, and we're going to get a poll going. That's my first block. I take my work, make sure that the points are facing up, and I slip stitch into the space between the chain three and the double crochet in the next block. Chain three and three more double crochet go into it. This is such a fun, repetitive, repetitious pattern. Once you get the hang of it, it's it's just addictive. Absolutely. Deanna is working on her stadium blanket. Everybody thinks Mr. and Stitches sounds good. Excellent. Slip stitch into the next space in the next block. Chain three and three double crochet. Good and clear. Oh, this is great. Marvelous. Marvelous, marvelous. Everyone is from everywhere and I love it. Best community on the internet. Everybody here is just so friendly and sweet and funny. I also have to say, you guys have got a great sense of humor. Mr. and Stitches and I spend so much time just laughing <laughs> with all of you. <laughs> so you said something about a poll? Yes, you let's like do, a do a poll. You would like to do a new poll? All let's right. Let's do a poll. Really, really simple. Have you ever done a C to C project before? Yes or no? Mr. and Stitches will get that poll up and running. You'll see it at the top of the live chat. And uh, please vote. It was ages before I attempted the corner to corner. Um, not that I was afraid of it. I just didn't actually know what it was called. I'd been around these blankets my whole life, but didn't know that they were called corner to corner or that that was kind of the, the common name for it. Um, but I always loved how they looked and I could never figure out how they were done. So when I finally realized that it was the corner to corner pattern and I tried it and I realized how easy it was, I fell in love. So I love using this. I've got one, two, three, four, five blocks. Each of those blocks has a point. They're facing upwards. That means I've finished row five. I've still got this pretty minty color happening. So I really like that. I love it when a self striping cake has long stripes of that color like you get to use and enjoy that color for a while i always really appreciate that everybody's weighing in on what they're working on i love it curated life can you make it connected can you make it connected can you sort of 
explain a little further what you mean by that? What you like, what connect what? I'm curious. Everybody's working on a little, everybody's got a little bit of C2C in something. I love it. Oh, so great. Starting row six, chain six to begin, double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains. That becomes block number one. And then it's just a constant repeat. Make sure that your points are all facing up. So there's my block. I make sure my points are all facing up. I find the space between the chain three and the double crochet of the first block, slip stitch in there, and start another block. Chain three, and three double crochet. And I just saw, oh my gosh, Curated Life just won a membership, and that membership was purchased by Connie. Thank you so much, Connie. And congratulations to Curated Life. <laughs> slip stitch into the space between the chain three and the double crochet of the next block, chain three, and three double crochet. Doris, if you're, um, if you need to catch up, it's just the first five rows of your standard corner to corner stitch. We have the original pattern tutorial linked down below. So if you need to catch up, that's where we're at. Uh, actually, correction, I'm not sure if I linked it down below. Oh, I did. You did? Yeah, you saved it over from yesterday, right? The information? I think so. Yeah, so I double checked it before the, okay, good. the stream. Yeah, because I was going to say we, we would have had to do it after, but yeah. um, okay. Nope. It's, it's in the description box. Yeah. Can I keep my job? Or yes, you can keep your no? job. Can keep it? Okay, I'm good. a good supervisor. I double check your work. <laughs> stop here and make sure that I've got six blocks at the end of row six. Another good way to know that you're always on track. So when you finish row six, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's easy to count those blocks in a row. You're just looking for those peaks. So that's the end of row six. Also, you should have a very perfect triangle shape happening. If it doesn't look perfectly even, then you've probably missed a block. So that's one way to know. Um, the other thing you can do is look at it like you would if you were actually building this into a square or a rectangle. Both of these sides should have the exact same number of blocks running along them. Six in my case, because I've done six rows. So you can count the blocks going up the side, six. You can count the blocks going across the long edge, six. You can count the points, if it's easier to see the points rather than the whole block. But this row, or this edge, measurement should be exactly the same as that edge measurement. So you should have a perfect right angle. So that way you always know you're on track. It's a nice way to keep track of it. Yes, yes, we finally pulled. Actually, Mr. Stitches is still down the well. I just lowered a microphone down there for him. <laughs> I have a little bit of uh, stale bread. <laughs> I have some uh, some uh, three-day-old water. Oh, you're so hard done by. And a brand new microphone. <laughs> so all the important stuff is down here in the well. And I have a small television and a, a Nintendo, so I'm fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I had Oreos, but Jada ate them all. That is not true. I buy the Oreos and then she eats them. I, I'm a little confused by this system. I'll give you that. You do pick out the Oreos. I think it could be argued about who buys them. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely eat some of them. <laughs> some? Some? <laughs> yes, priorities. <laughs> right, Charlie? Once you get comfortable with the corner to corner pattern, you will find that you speed up a bit because you're always just looking for that space in the next block between the chain three and the double crochet. Uh, you're, or you can also look at it like you're looking for the peak of the next block and you're just slipping your hook into the space beneath it. 
um, you're building a block onto the side of a block from the previous row, which is sort of sometimes why the corner to corner gives some people a bit of pause. But once you understand that you're just sort of looking, just, just kind of bend the way you normally think, you're just kind of crocheting on a bit of a lean. Uh, once you've got that in your brain, then it's it's really easy to see. Karen has purchased a membership. Thank you, Karen. And Doodly's Crochet, also known as Julia, has won it. Welcome. <laughs> um, we have a question from, I think it was Krista. Yeah. Who asks, um, do we have a pattern in our shop for the Frank in Stitches blanket? Um, are you I'm, I'm just wondering if Krista means the the Frankenstein um, Frankie uh, blanket square I'm not sure exactly well we do have a pattern for the Frank uh, the Frankenstein's monster it's a great big 12 inch square uh, it's the Frankenstein's monster we have that pattern available in our Etsy shop we also have a bat an owl uh, we've got a handful of Halloween-y themed or monster movie kind of themed 12-inch um, fancy granny squares. They are all in our shop. Um, and if you do visit our shop, you'll find the... It's easiest to find them by clicking on the granny squares category. It's a pretty big uh, category because we have a lot of fancy squares in there, but they're all in that category. And speaking of the Etsy shop, thank you so much to everyone who's popped in and picked up the pattern for today. Um, a lot of you popped in after the live stream yesterday, and I wanted to make sure I, I thank you all today on the stream. It's uh, very much appreciated. It helps us a great deal here. Keep going. And that reminds me, we did tell you we had a special announcement to make today. Mr. and Stitches, is it time to make the special announcement? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I just uh, I don't want everyone to think it's 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 epic because it's not epic. It's just it's semi epic. It's semi epic. Just semi. Yeah. <laughs> semi epic. We have chosen a live crochet along project for next week. Um, a lot of people asked us to to do this um, over the years. We we had a tutorial for our baby dolls of the world. Uh, pattern ebook up on the channel for quite a while but when the COPA, COPA thing came along and they were kind of uh, picking on channels that had anything on them that might look attractive to kids they were kind of scaring us all into thinking we were going to have our channels erased because we were making kid friendly videos or things that looked attractive to kids and therefore they might get advertised to it was all very confusing um, they were trying to be helpful, YouTube that is, by coming along and flagging a bunch of videos that they figured might be problematic. And unfortunately, that was one of the videos that got flagged. So we just took that video down. And ever since, people have asked us if we could do the doll again. Where did your doll tutorial go? So next week, we are going to do a live crochet along of our baby doll pattern. I love that little doll. It's such a sweet and easy and fun little pattern. Um, it's an ebook in our shop. And we're also going to have some fun next week deciding what kind of clothes to make our doll because the ebook actually has a lot of different clothing options in it. So that's going to be next week. So if you're interested in making amigurumis or crocheting simple dolls or you've never done it before, then that will be a good one to tune in for because um, we're going to go through the whole thing step by step. And I just saw something flash through the live chat. Was that Kimberly? We got a super sticker, $4 super sticker of uh, our coffee uh, coffee pair friend from Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. So big thank you to Kimberly. <laughs> oh, and uh, you forgot to mention that we will be putting that Baby Dolls of the World uh, ebook on sale also. It is on sale right now. Oh, it's actually. on sale right now. It is. Yeah. It wow. And the, uh, the kerchief pattern. I am definitely going to get written up for my... <laughs> You're, you're getting, getting your page off. I'm getting a slip today. That's <laughs> by the end of this stream for sure. <laughs> that when did that sale launch? So that started today. Okay. It uh, it's the baby dolls of the world. Uh, our two kerchief patterns, our little kawaii bunny pattern, our little teddy bear pattern, and um, one other 
toy pattern. And my brain is drawing a blank, but we've got six patterns on sale in the Etsy shop right now. Um, and in particular, we're going to be doing the doll next week. So, um, and we just actually created it. It's a second edition ebook for that little doll pattern. We included the, uh, the hats and scarves um, in it. Uh, that we had done, an, a, we did a follow-up video for the hats and the scarves um, for that particular doll, and all of those videos kind of came down, which was really too bad. But um, the ebook includes all of those different patterns in it, so it's it's quite quite a lot of patterns in that book. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, that'll be next week. So looking forward to that. I like making little dolls. I am zipping along here. Uh, when would you like to uh, end the current poll? Do you want that to run for a while? Nope, that, how many, uh, usually I think if we get to, you know, just 100 or a little over votes. A little, I think we're quite well over 100 votes. All right. Yeah, okay. So let's see how many of you have done a corner-to-corner -corner project before. Yes. 62%, no, 34%, not sure, 2%. Oh, good for sticking in the not sure, Mr. and Stitches. Yay, redemption. <laughs> I get to keep my job and my cookies. <laughs> well, maybe not your cookies. <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is technically the corner-to-corner -corner pattern, but it's not a blanket. It's being turned into a kerchief. So I, I really like it when you can sort of take a project pattern that seems familiar and, you know, move it sideways and do something else. Oh, that's a good poll idea, Wendy. Do you see that, Mr. Insitches? Uh, Wendy says, poll idea, what age did you learn to crochet? I like that one. I'll put that up right now. Yeah. That is a great question. Good poll question. Oh, I'm almost done. With this mint, I'll be moving into that blue soon. This is going to be very interesting. About half of it is mint, but of course now that every time you get, um, every row gets a little bit larger than the row before. So if your color is all, if there's the same amount of color per stripe, those stripes will go, will get smaller and smaller and smaller. But of course this isn't going to be terribly big because it's only a kerchief and not a blanket. Yes, curated life. The dolls can be girls or boys. It's um, it can be a girl, it could be a boy. It can have hair or no hair. It's quite a fun little uh, versatile pattern. And then of course you can make clothing um, of any kind for it. You can just put it in a little romper and add a um, a uh, a bonnet. I was looking for the word bonnet. Um, you can put it in pants. You can put it in a shirt. You can put it in a dress. It's all there's all sorts of fun little clothes in that particular ebook. And uh, we'll figure out what we're going to put it in. Uh, next week while we're making it. It's kind of fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm already at nine rows across. Let's see here. 21 and a half centimeters across or eight and a half. So I'm about halfway done the width of the blanket. Every row begins with a chain six. You double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains. Nico! Thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted another membership. Mary has won it. <laughs> Wonderful for Mary. Thank, Thank you so you, much. Thank you, Nico. Keeping everybody, keeping everybody in the family here. This is so sweet. Well, some of you started crocheting early and some of you started crocheting later in life. That's cool. I um, I taught myself how to crochet. I learned how to knit first. I learned how to knit when I was about 11. And then I taught myself how to crochet uh, a, little, a little bit after that, maybe, maybe a year or two later. I think I was around 14 when I officially made myself a hat. My blue has finally started to pop into the pattern here. So nice subtle change between the mint and the blue. I'm going to get a couple more stitches in and we'll take a good close look at that. That's another thing I like about a good uh, self-striping yarn. I don't like the change between the color to be too 
muddy or drawn out. It's so nice, nice to see that like so many people kind of learned and then they went away from it and then they got back into it. I figured that's a lot of hobbies. A lot of us get kind of start something, give it a try, and then we get busy with, you know, life or other interests and then we come back to it. I certainly did. I didn't crochet constantly from the time I was 14. I kind of went back to knitting and I was really more interested in knitting for a while um, until my friend uh, showed me how to make a granny square and then I found this really nifty book in a secondhand shop that had, you know, like these classic granny square style ponchos like from the 70s and I thought, oh, I have to make one of those and that just kind of got me started and then I never really stopped after that. We have a new member joining. Big thank you to Mary. Another Mary? Am I, am I missed something else? Oh, it is Mary, welcome. <laughs> Mary, welcome to Alpaca. Thank you for joining. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and Linda, thank you so much for making up a pattern in our Etsy shop. It's a busy little spot. I purposely forgot how to knit. <laughs> I love both. I really do love both. I have to be in the mood for knitting because knitting takes a little longer, but I really love, I love the fabric you can create with knitting. Um, but I love both. I absolutely adore it. But I really love crochet because I feel like I can make something quickly. Like this will be done today, this pretty little kerchief. Um, I like this. There is barely any change between the mint and the blue it just gets right to the point so i like that there's no muddy you know long drawn out transition between the colors it just goes mint blue and that's a really pretty blue it's almost kind of a steely gray very nice very very nice every row begins with a chain six double crochet into the third i should say the fourth fifth and sixth chains make sure your points are all facing up so you do this and I always kind of go flop, make sure my points are facing up and then it's easy to identify the next point. I'm slipping my hook into the space just beneath it, slip stitch, chain three, three double crochet all into the same space. They kind of, those stitches even themselves out along the length of that chain three that you're working around. That creates another block. You want to anchor it to the next one. You slip your hook through that space, slip stitch, chain three, three double crochet. I am going to end the current poll. All because, right. Because uh, we can only put four options. That's um, fine. You I, can kind of do I, I, spans. Anyone that has a, a older age will have to just put it in the chat. <laughs> when did you learn to crochet 21 or older leave age in the chat 34 percent 11 to 20 6 to 10 2 to 5 2 to 5. <laughs> i guess yeah some of you probably did learn when you were really little i think um i think i was curious about it especially knitting when i was little because my grandmother and all my great aunts and my great great aunts they all knit a few of them crocheted my great grandmother both my great grandmothers crocheted um but uh, they were never around to sort of teach me. So I think I like to watch them making stuff, but I never really learned at their feet. I like being able to knit and crochet. It's almost like being able to speak two languages. You know, you, you can... You can also move some of the techniques sideways. Um, if you know how to knit, then Tunisian crochet isn't as much of a mystery. Um, if you know how to crochet, then, um, you know, picking up a knitting needle doesn't feel quite so crazy. Nick B, member for 13 months with a membership milestone. Hey, Mr. and Jada, missed you all so much. Any advice for someone who hasn't crocheted in months to get back into the swing of things again? Nick, yes. <laughs> Boy, did you come to the right place and ask that question. <laughs> um, if you're trying to get your crojo back, then you want to start with something small and you want to start with your favorite hook 
and it doesn't matter what the actual project is, you want to go into your stash, find a ball of yarn that's a color that makes you really, really happy, and just make something super small. Practice a couple stitches, take it out, maybe tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to make myself a, a, a dishcloth or a little, a little sack. Um, maybe I'll make myself a little, a little smiling face applique. Maybe I'll make myself, you know, just something small, something useful. Maybe a, um, even a hat. I often like to start with a hat. I feel like a hat is an afternoon sort of sized project. And then I've completed something. It's something new. It's something that makes me happy. And, uh, or it's something I can give away as a gift. And then that just kind of gets me back into the swing of things. Um, so try not to, don't expect too much of yourself. I think that we get into the habit of thinking, oh, I've got to make a full blanket every time I sit down to crochet. No, you don't. Just pick out a yarn you really want to look at and that you really want to feel between your fingers because crochet is so tactile. Uh, obviously, if it didn't feel nice, we wouldn't want to do it. So part of the enjoyment of crochet is just how nice a yarn feels in your fingers. Uh, use your favorite hook. So pick a project. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Ida, thank you so much for picking up a pattern in our Etsy shop. Thank you. Um, you wanna... I would just quickly like to sure. um, chime in here. Mm -hmm. Mary asked if we could do some um, beginner knitting uh, tutorials, and we actually have several. I think somewhere between four and six uh, knitting for beginners. Yes, you we remember? Do. Yep, we've got. Um... A couple of knitting patterns and all of the casting on, casting off, how to knit, how to purl, uh, we have those. So if you're brand new and you've never tried knitting before, we do have some very basic knitting tutorials that will at least get you clacking a couple of knitting needles together in a way that makes you understand uh, what you're doing with the yarn. Uh, I keep meaning to do some more knitting tutorials, but uh, like we were sort of mentioning in the chat, it's it's knitting takes longer not that there's anything wrong with that but it just takes longer to get an entire project done um, but we did do one we do have a knit project very very simple on how to knit just a cowl oh golly <laughs> yay karen, thank you so much karen karen has picked up a pattern in her etsy shop Krista wants to know how long we've been married. Do you remember? <laughs> yes, the answer is 1,000 years. It's been the same answer for 10 years. It's been the same answer for 15 years, 20 years. The answer is 1,000. <laughs> Welcome to the family, Barbara. Thank you for joining. Um, honestly, Krista, I have to think about it. I think it's, I think it's 18. Sweetheart, is it 18? Uh, it's somewhere around there. Um, we were married in August 2006. August 2006. So everyone yes. out there can do the math. Yes. It's somewhere around 17 or 18 years. Yeah, that's 18. Give or take a thousand or so. 18, 17, 18. Um, did you see we have a new member? I did. Shout out to Barbara. Thank you for joining. I did see that. I did. Welcome her to the fold. Yes, Catherine, I agree. If you drop stitches in knitting, it is a little more problematic than if you drop a stitch in. If you drop a stitch in crochet, you've it's basically fallen off your hook. It's it's a lot it's a lot easier to to get um, to drop a stitch and get frustrated in knitting. I feel um, I know you can you can kind of pick them up once again if you know how to crochet, you can pull a stitch up into place and it's a little easier. That's why I like to keep my crochet hooks around with me when I knit. Um, and I really love to mix the two together. Like I like to, to knit something, but then like crochet and edging onto it, for example. Welcome everybody who's just joining us. We are working on our summer breeze kerchief pattern we have the original tutorial link down below so if you need to catch up um, that's where you'll find the info of course you can always watch this later the rerun and sort of see it all from the start and there is a cheat sheet of sort 
with project notes and recommended hook sizes and yarn weights um, in the community post section. We put that up last night and we reposted it again for family members this morning. So if you're wondering kind of which hook you should try depending on the yarn you choose, all that information should be there. I'm using a size three, 100% cotton. It's a ripple cake from Karen, beautiful self-striping thing with a G6 or a four millimeter hook. And the target length across the long side that I'm going for is between 15 and 16 inches. Uh, I'm at 11 and a half inches or 19, no, 29 centimeters. So I'm getting there. What row did I finish? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I've just finished row 12. So row 12 and it's almost Everyone's 11. doing the math for us. It'll be officially 17 years in August. 17 years in August. Does that sound right to you? It it kind does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> I think it's I think it's closer to a thousand years in August. <laughs> ninety nine. We're currently at nine hundred and ninety nine. It does feel like that someday. <laughs> Boom! Especially when somebody steals someone else's cookies. <laughs> Is it really stealing if I take them right from the package in front of your face? Like <laughs> it is when when I'm afraid of you. <laughs> Debbie, welcome to Vicuña. Thank you so much for joining the family. So I was thinking that uh, when I did my little swatch last night, it looked as though it was going to be one row per inch. And so if I was going for between 15 and 16 inches across lengthwise, it might be around 15 or 16 rows, but it looks like I'm losing a little bit of size um, with every single row. So just a little tiny bit. So I might end up doing 16 to 17 rows. You can make this pattern, you, so you can keep repeating the corner to corner, ever increasing part of the pattern. So every row begins with a chain six, and you start your first block using that chain six, and then you work a block off the side of every single block from the row before. You just keep repeating that pattern until this upper edge is as long across as you want it to be. And like I said, between, between 13 and 14 inches for children, between 15 and 16 inches for adults, or maybe 16 and 17 inches if you've got a bigger noggin or a lot of hair, uh, but it's completely up to you. And we're adding ties. So keep that in mind. That does make this nice and flexible. I really like how this looks. And doesn't this corner to corner make such a pretty texture? I just love this texture. Welcome, welcome everybody. Yes, that's right, the Americans. You guys have got a long weekend this coming weekend. Well, then you definitely want a new kerchief for it. That's perfect timing. <laughs> new kerchief for a nice uh, backyard barbecue. Backyard Sounds barbecue. Sounds good to me. Hanging out in the sunshine. Or if it's breezy, you got your kerchief on. It keeps your hair in place. Love that. <laughs> I agree, Rose. I am not intimidating at all. <laughs> Possibly intimidating to the Oreos I'm eating, but, you know, not to Mr. and Stitches. You're, you're like a Jekyll and Hyde when you get those Oreos into your hand. <laughs> She's like all sweet and cute and gentle, and then <laughs> boom. <laughs> arr, 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 arr. <laughs> lies, all lies. A A Angel said a thousand a thousand years in squirrel years. So, <laughs> you know that's accurate. That, that is pretty accurate. In <laughs> squirrel years, it's a thousand. <laughs> hey, um. For the gamers out there, uh, Jessica Rabbit just reminded me, um, what is that new game we just saw that's coming out soon? Oh, it um, looks really good. It's something about the 
Um, it's uh, my, um, pl my plucky some plucky something, plucky's adventure. Oh, it, it's a uh, um, oh darn it. Like something to do with like like a like he's a, a bishop or a priest or a am I am I. It was a funny. It was a funny name. It made me think of that. I don't. That's not what it was, but it made me think of that. Um, it's a. It's a. It's a platformer, but it's. It looked so cool. You kind of flip in and out between being a two dimensional and three dimensional. Yeah, I thought uh, our our gamer our gamer uh, crew out there would probably uh, enjoy checking that out. I can't I'm think of the name. I'm pretty sure it's Plucky's something. Oops. Chain six and double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains, not the third. There we go. I agree, Vima. It's nice to hear. Oh, goodness. Mr. and Stitches without him having hey to go. Hey-ho! Carlene! Thank you, Pattern Carlene. sale, pattern sale. Carlene has picked up a pattern or two. Thank you so much, Carlene. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? Nico! Nico has gifted a membership! <laughs> Thank you, Nico! Nico, busy, busy, flinging memberships left and right. Charlene has won it! <laughs> Thank you so much, Nico! And welcome to the family, Charlene! I love this yarn too, Nico. It's, uh, it's, it's, I've never used it before. It's a cotton ripple cake, and I have to say it's a lovely feeling cotton. It's really, really soft, and I love the feel of the ripple. It's kind of unevenly wound, which I also like the look of, and I think it's creating a really cool in between that and the corner to corner. I love this this bumpy texture. Oh, I think this looks really good so far. I don't think I'm gonna get. Oh, I might. I might get to the pinky peach part of the the cake. We'll see. I know that the um, the border is gonna be different. Ah, oh, this is gonna be pretty. I am looking forward to wearing this. I'm gonna be wearing this all weekend. Bonnie Dick, a member for 40 months. Not the biggest fan of the look of corner to corner, but with the smaller yarn, it is nice. I agree. I agree. You can make something look so different just by varying the hook size or the yarn weight or even the texture of the yarn. I really like the way corner to corner looks when you use crochet thread. I think that that can, that looks, I mean, just about any pattern in crochet thread takes on the look of lace. So that's really cool. Um, I made a doll kerchief using the corner to corner pattern. So the same pattern, um, but using crochet thread. And it just, it just looks so delicate. I love the way it looks. The least liked yarn, Zyra, Zyra Zyria, is that, is that what you're asking? Like what's the least liked yarn? Everybody's talking about the games. Did playing. you get the membership milestone from Bonnie? I did. Oh, okay. I read it out Excellent. loud. Excellent. I know you're busy talking games with everybody. I'm talking games. This has now transitioned from crochet to gaming. Plucky. Um, for those of you that are curious, it, it I just saw the trailer yesterday. Um, I saw it on Nintendo's YouTube channel. And it's uh, it's I, all I know is it's called Plucky something. Um, but it looks great. It does look great. Yeah. We'll find it. We'll find the name of it. Okay, so the least liked yarn. That's a good question. Um, I would also love everyone else to weigh in on this in the chat. What is the yarn you like the least? That's a good question. I have. I usually say I, there's, I haven't met too many yarns that I don't like. Um, sometimes I find a yarn in a batch of yarn that otherwise I enjoy that's like, I don't know, maybe it was the end of the end of the line or something and it, it's got a lot of knots in it or I, I didn't really kind of like the feel of it but um I usually don't like a yarn because I'm bored of the color so it's not that I don't like the yarn but maybe I get bored of the color um I don't like yarns that are too fluffy like the ones that are constantly have fluff coming off like they're just like they're pretending to be Angora or something and they're really, really fluffy and those little fluffs just come off everywhere and they get up your nose and they make your, you know, they, they get into your eyes. 
I don't like that kind of yarn. I don't mind yarn if it's fluffy, if the fluff stays attached to the yarn, but I don't like yarns that like molt. <laughs> Jessica Rabbit found the game. It's called Lucky Squire. Lucky Squire. Yeah, yeah. Squire. That's why I was thinking Bishop or, <laughs> or something. Squire. You were yeah. close with the Bishop One, thing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'm fourteen rows in. How am I doing? Thirteen and a half. Okay, so thirteen. Oh, well, thirteen inches. About. 33 centimeters. Okay, so that's about the size I would I would pause if I was making this for a child because this is sort of a nice um, edge. It's going to kind of curve around the, the head and then the ties are going to come off either end. But I need to add a few more rows for me because I'm an adult and I want it to be just a little bigger. So a couple more rows and then I'm going to put on my ties. Yarn with pieces of sequins in the threads. Yeah, I've had a couple of those. Um, I, I don't know. It depends on the project I'm making. I made, I used some of that sequin yarn. I had yarn, the sequins were every couple of inches, so they weren't too close together, which was nice. And I made, um, I made some fingerless gloves and they were white. It was white yarn with white sequins and I made fingerless gloves with them and they were really pretty. I don't know what happened to those. It's interesting. Um, and that wasn't too bad to work with. And I'll be darned if I can remember the name of that yarn. And I got I got it in pink and I got it in green too. Novelty yarn. That's a good one, Joanne. I'm not a big fan of novelty yarn. I'll buy it sometimes because I think it's cute, but then I, I don't end up necessarily using it. So, but I, I don't know that I don't like it. See, that's the thing. I not liking something I think is a bit different than, than finding something like tricky to, to work with. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'd like, for example, um, really fine mohair is beautiful but not always that easy to work with if you if you knit or you you crochet and you want to take it out like the little ed ends might get knotted together and that's really frustrating but the yarn itself is beautiful so yarn that i don't like I'm, i think i'm going to stick with yarn that just fluffs like it almost like it falls apart when you're trying to use it and gets everywhere i don't like that yarn so that's the yarn i don't like <laughs> can hear you typing over there, mister. Are you? Um, Catherine asked if I could dig out the link for the bookmarks for Krista, uh, but I feel like we have several videos of bookmarks. Um, we so do. I was going to ask which ones. We've got um, the bookmark collection based on the MMAM, the Mighty Mile a Minute stitches. We've got the back to school bookmarks. We've got the polka dot bookmark that's got like kind of a nice cottage core vibe going. Um, what else have we got? I think the best thing to do would we've be we've got the flower bookmark. Yeah, we have a we have a lot. So the best thing to do would be just type in Jada in stitches bookmark tutorial or bookmarks, and they should all pop up. Um, Otherwise, I'd need a specific uh, name. Uh, yeah, Mela, making a whole bunch of granny squares using corner to corner and joining them makes an amazing blanket. And you can easily join corner to corner squares as you go. So if you kind of know the order you want them to, to go in, then you can you can also join as you go. It, it, again, it's kind of like you just have to bend your brain a little bit sideways, but it's totally easy uh, to do. And uh, corner to corner squares are so cute. We've got um, we got a corner to corner square tutorial. We've done that. I feel like 
I know I've made a bunch. Maybe we don't? Um, I know we've got a corner to corner granny shell stitch square tutorial. And we've got a corner to corner blanket tutorial. Maybe we don't actually have a corner to corner, just a classic corner to corner square. Oh, I'm switching to pink. Oh my gosh. Or this peachy color. Oh, wow. Oh, this is so nice. I wonder if my whole thing is going to be. Okay, in so I've pulled up the bookmarks here. We have the beautiful bookmarks using Lion Brand Summer Nights yarn. We have the polka dot bookmark. I think that's the one, the cottage core. Yes. That might be the one that everyone's talking about. Then we have the flower bookmark. Um, then we have the one that looks like um, like the character inspired. Yes. Um, called three playful back to school bookmarks. Yep. And then yep. we have one from way back when oh. we were both young and adorable. <laughs> And that one is called How to Make a Teddy Bear Face. Oh, my gosh. Remember yeah. that one? Um, uh, Caroline says we have a playlist for crochet bookmarks. She's right. That would also be a good thing to toss in the chat. And a big thank you to Cappy for picking up some patterns at our Etsy shop just now. So I've switched now officially from that nice steely gray blue to the peach color. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I'm going to get in another row before I bother to measure. Start with a chain six, double crochet into the fourth, fifth, and sixth chains. And then I'm going to flip my work so that all the points are facing up. And then off I go. Is it possible to make a granny square kerchief? Absolutely it is. Um, you just need to, so you can do it one of two ways. You can use the corner to corner granny shell stitch, which might be the easiest because it leaves you with a, um, a flat edge. Uh, because if you just keep working the triangle part, you don't have to close it off. And then, so sort of like we're doing the ever increasing triangle using the classic corner to corner stitch. Um, if you use the corner to corner granny shell stitch, you also don't have to worry about squaring it off. It just automatically turns into a triangle for you. And that would be a good way to make yourself a kerchief. Um, I could probably make one and, <clears throat> and show you what I mean, but we do have a tutorial on that. So yes, you could totally do that. And that would give you the look of a granny square. Um, there are granny square style kerchiefs out there they use like the little squares and then like you kind of have them turned on their on their corner so that this this would be a granny square down here with the corner the point facing down so there's a square and then you'd have like another square and another square the thing is is that when you get up here you kind of need half squares um so you need to however many squares you have you're going to need like to fill in the corners with with um half squares half granny squares which isn't a big deal uh, and that looks really cute. But again, you want to use like a not too thick yarn. Katrina, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, the doll, can you please link the doll pattern? Yeah, it's in the, it's in, if you pop into the Etsy shop, I think our Etsy link, our Etsy shop is linked somewhere. It should be sitting right up top. Uh, when you first arrive at the shop, the doll, the doll ebook should be right up top. I think I'm pretty sure that's how I left it this morning. Katrina's crochet and more with the the sweet super chat. Thank you so much. Hello to the lurkers and trolls. <laughs> I put the Etsy shop link pinned in the comment above the chat. Great, thank so you. So if anyone would like to go check out the dolls pattern or any other of the dolls that we have on sale, you yep. can go straight there. I think they're all featured up top, right? They should be all featured up top, yes. Okay. 
Judy, I think that's an awesome idea, using the C2C to make, make some Tetris pieces. I think that would look really cool. Jennifer, a member for 28 months. Thank you. Last week when I was in the hospital. Oh, I'm so glad you're back out. I watched your live streams and it helped me pass the time. I am so happy to hear that. I'm glad you're back out and I hope everything's moving smoothly, especially as you head into the long weekend. It's so nice to be home for that. Vima asks, Jaden, you have any pattern or video tutorial for a mini frog? Hmm, you know, I do actually have a pattern for a frog, but I have not <laughs> created a tutorial for it or even put it in the shop yet. But it's, um, we have a frog based on our pocket pet. Um, I've been meaning to do that. I even have like little pictures of it somewhere. Um, Ooh, I, should... I like the color change. Isn't that pretty? We've gone from a like a, a light aqua blue to a slightly darker. Mm -hmm. And now we've gone to pink. That looks great. Yeah, it's quite nice. Um, I'm going to have to... I, I don't think we have any frog tutorials, Vima. I know that I have a frog pattern or two, but I'm not sure that any of them are in our Etsy shop either. I'll have to look into that. Yes, I'm using a cotton ripple cake karen cotton ripple cake uh thank you for uh mentioning that katrina if if any if i'm sorry guys if i don't see everything in the chat i apologize i'm kind of got half an eye there and i'm also kind of paying attention to what i'm doing so don't you worry if, i'm uh, lurking and watching the chat you're lurking and working are you sweetie? i'm like a i'm like a really high-end security camera <laughs> over here if um if you if you see a question any of you and you know the answer and you can kind of pop in and um answer it if you don't hear me answering, then please feel free and thank you for helping. <clears throat> um, I'm going to have to look into it, uh, Vima. I, I, I know I have them. Um, I was literally just looking at the photo of them a couple days ago thinking, oh, yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's up in the shop yet. I will look into it. I will look into it. All right, now I'm going to finish my last block in this row, see what row I'm on, count it up, measure. I can't wait to wear this. It feels so nice between my fingers. Very nice cotton. Well done, Karen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 rows. Goodly. Done. All Thank right. you. All right. <laughs> Dawn has picked up a couple of patterns at Etsy shop. Thank you so much. A uh, quick question from Vicky: Does mm -hmm. the C2C use more yarn when making a throw? Um, I'm going to say that a the corner to corner might use up more yarn than a standard granny square, only because you're really filling in the spaces. Like you'll notice that there really aren't spaces showing, unlike a granny square, which I don't have any immediately grabbable. But can you can you um, put hold that up a little? toward the camera so we can see the stitches. Yeah, perfect. A little down a bit. Perfect. I will do a frog, everybody. I will do a frog. <laughs> I do have that. Um, I do have that pattern. I just, uh, I haven't gotten around. Oh, there's so many things I haven't gotten around to. I could literally sit here and we crochet We haven't done a pocket pet video in a long time. Maybe uh, now's the time for a new one. You know what? I I, I will. Um, it's it's, it's uh, been a while. If I've got some energy left this afternoon, since it's such a lovely rainy day, maybe I'll start that uh, going. Because I would love to get that out for everybody. I, we haven't done a pocket pet. You're so right. In quite a while. And it's such a cute frog. I really like it. <laughs> Um, really liking this. Manny May, welcome back to Alpaca. Thank you. Um, I'm going to put in one more row. So this is exactly 15 inches across, or if you use metric like us, 39 centimeters. So I think I want it to be just a little bit wider. So I'm going to go for, it'll probably be just under 16 inches at the end of this row. But I like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Plus, I want to get just a little bit more of this peach into it before I add the ties and then put the border on. But this is such a quick little pattern. Oh my gosh. Um, using the bigger hook and the heavier weight yarn, 
means I don't have to make as many rows as I do when I use a smaller hook and the finer weight yarn like we did in the actual tutorial. But it doesn't matter how many rows you do. Um, so whether you need to make do more to get the desired measurements or fewer like I am today, it doesn't matter because the pattern still looks the same. And I think what you want is an odd number of rows, I think, but we shall see. Dawn, member for 54 months. Thank you, says adorable scarf. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. I'm just sitting here rapidly trying to remember if I need an odd, I think I do need an odd number of rows. So that's something. I think you want an odd number of rows. Now you can go maybe err on the side of a little more than a little less, because uh, then your ties don't have to be as long. So this is going to be row, let's see, what did I just, what did I just say I finished? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is gonna be row 17, which is an odd number, which is perfect. So that worked out. <laughs> I'm gonna get row 17 complete. Row 17 is an odd number. I think it, I want an odd number so that my border works out on it. Um, if you're comfortable adding borders to things and kind of making stuff up as you go, then it probably doesn't matter what number of rows you, you have in your basic kerchief pattern. But if you're not comfortable making stuff up and you're going to use the same border that we use in the tutorial and the one that I'll be using today, which I'm pretty sure is a split shell stitch. Um, or is it the, no, it's not the split shell. It's the... Um, scallop, it's a scallop edge. Um, then you want to make sure you use an odd number of rows in the body of your kerchief. So aim for those measurements and then go for the odd row that's a little, that's the closest and, and larger if necessary. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Jennifer says that Memorial Day is to honor the soldiers in the military. Is that, do you guys do Remembrance Day in November? That's when we kind of do that. We have Remembrance Day on November the 11th in, in Canada. It's uh, mostly about remembering the soldiers who fought in the, the wars. Um, but we do that in we do that in November. So is that do you guys do that in November too, or do you guys do that this weekend? It's kind of a much nicer time of year to do that than November. November is so awful, cold and wet. So Brittany is job hunting, and we would like to all wish Brittany a good luck. Oh, good luck. Go Gee, grab you, those jobs, Brittany. I was going to say, you want to come up to Canada? We are, we've got like job openings all over the place. I mean, nobody wants to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants to run away from Canada the last few years. Yeah. We've got job openings all over the place for everything. It's amazing anything's running up here, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, you know, I'm curious, um, for those of you in the chat, because because everyone's from all over the world, can you guys let us know, are you guys finding that everywhere you go out and about, there's job openings, like like desperate job openings everywhere? Like companies have a thousand... Um, like they're hiring, hiring hand now, over hiring, fist? Need help, mm -hmm. apply within, like just plastered all over the place? Or is that just us up here in... Uh, yeah, in that America's just... America's hat. Yeah, is that in America's hat? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was seven. While you guys are mulling that over, oh, thanks for answering the question about Veterans Day. I appreciate that. Oh, Veterans Day is November the eleventh, 
And that's remembering everybody who served. And so Memorial Day is is just for the fallen as opposed to just everybody who served. I get it. Okay. The, o the only people that want to come to Canada are the ones that want to hang out with you. <laughs> so that's very sweet. That's I appreciate that. Yes. That, that might be we one of these. Use, we could use the, the, the support. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seven. Okay, I have 17 rows complete. I have reached a total length of 40-ish centimeters or... 15 and a half, almost 16 inches across. So that is a nice width across my head. Um, and I like the depth. The depth is nice. That will cover, that will keep my hair in check. That is 22 centimeters deep. It'll be a little deeper when I've got my border on. Uh, or what have I got here? Turn both, Jada. About almost nine inches. It'll be deeper with the border. So that's perfect. So here I go. I am going to now officially move from the kerchief part of the C to C build into flattening out the upper edge. Then I'm going to build some ties and we're going to put the border on. We're going to build the ties in as we go. So the first thing to do is to flatten off this, this sort of jagged mountain ridge upper edge because this is the edge that sits that frames your face. So here we go. When you get to this point, we are going to chain one and turn and we're going to slip stitch across these three stitches that are here so back across the three double crochets that you just finished the last row with and then we're going to slip stitch into that chain space or not that chain space but the space between the chain three and the double crochet so kind of like the same place you would slip stitch into when you were working the usual corner to corner stitch. So right into that space, slip stitch, chain three, skip the space and look for the next space. So look for the next point basically of the next block, slip stitch into that space between the chain three and the double crochet. And you're going to basically create a little triangular space between blocks, chain three, skip over to the next block looking for the point slip stitch right underneath the point in that space and you're going to get these nice little triangular spaces and that just creates a nice straight edge across the front so that you don't have that kind of jagged look framing your face it just kind of makes everything look neat and tidy and flat chain three slip stitch into the peak of the next block, chain three, slip stitch into the next peak of the next block and all the way across and all you're doing is creating these nice little triangle spaces in between the blocks. Smooths off that edge. So it looks like we're not the only ones that um, it looks like everyone's desperate for workers. Everybody, eh? It, it sounds like it's kind of spread around. Well, then I really hope that Brittany is picky and gets a job that yeah. suits her. Brittany needs to be very picky and very aggressive. When, she's yeah. in, when you shake a hand, you almost tear that hand right off. <laughs> and then ask for triple the, triple the payment. Yeah. <laughs> Job hunting is so nerve wracking. Like even when people are hiring, it's still very nerve wracking. I put a little poll up cause I was curious. I may have asked this uh, years back, but so from our end, mem channel members show up in green. Sub subscribers show up in a, a gray blue color. Then uh, members show up in green, but members have a, our little badge. Mm -hmm and it's different uh, colored depending on your tenure. Yep. So I'm curious if everyone out there can also see that. So when you're in the chat, do you see if someone's a member, if someone has a badge, if it's a, a different color? I'm just curious. Great question. I have finished smoothing off the 
bumpy edge. So this is the edge that frames my face. I have slip stitch, chain three, uh, slip stitch into the next point of each block, chain three. That's what creates the little spaces in between, those nice little triangular spaces. I, all the way across, I'm at the other side now. I'm going to make my first tie. Now, in the original tutorial, we chained 71 for an adult, 61 for a child. That was using a size one finger weight yarn and a very small hook. So I'm going to start with 41 chains because I'm using a size three weight yarn and a four millimeter hook or G6. And I really only need my ties to be about 30 centimeters or 12 inches long, maybe a little bit longer um, if you've got a lot of hair or you just want a lot of extra sort of tie. But I'm going to start with 40 chains, 41 chains, and I'm going to see if that's long enough. You can make your ties as long as you need them to be. Just make sure that you make them both the same length. So if you go with 41 chains on your first tie, go with 41 chains on your next tie. All right, there's 41 chains. That, that feels nice. Now I'm going to be slip stitching all the way back. Slip stitching will make this a slightly thicker tie. So I'm gonna add another six chains, making a total of 47 chains just for that extra inch or so. So I've gone with 47 chains. Again, you can use as many chains or as few chains as you like. Just make sure you make them both the same, keeping in mind that when you slip stitch all the way back, it's going to make that just a little bit thicker. Um, depending on the weight category of the yarn you use, you may need more or fewer um, because your weight category really does change the gauge of your stitches. So I'm going to go with 47 chains. That'll be enough for me uh, using a size three weight yarn. But like I said, in the original tutorial, we used 71 um, and that was with a very tiny size one fingering weight yarn. Skip the first chain from the hook, slip stitch into the second chain. Loosey goosey, no need to be tight. Slip stitch into every chain all the way back. And that is how we make our built-in tie, easy peasy. If you keep your tension uh, not too tight, nice and not loose, but just easy. I kind of I kind of use that word a lot, just easy. Um, even if you end up with some slightly bumpy or uh, awkward jagged looking slip stitches it's okay because if there's a little bit more give to your tension when you're slip stitching like this you can take your tie and see how it kind of looks like it wants to bump up a little bit when you pull it out if you have a little bit of extra give in your slip stitches they'll even each other out so then you'll get like a nice straight non bumpy tie so don't be too tight with your slip stitches. Don't be too loose. Just take your time. Sometimes I have to pause because I lose my loop <laughs> when I'm doing this. <laughs> That's okay. No rush here. Question from Vima's Crochet. Yes. Jada, does slip stitching decrease the length of the chains? Slip stitch only decreases the technical length by a single chain. So if you chained 47 like I did, you'll have 46 slip stitches. However, slip stitching does thicken the chain, so it thickens the tie a little bit, um, meaning that if you only just chained, it's a lot more loose and it's a lot more tieable. When you slip stitch or use a thicker stitch even, like a single crochet or a half double crochet, it thickens the tie. So it makes it stronger, but it also means that you might need a little bit more tie to get a bow. Um, I hope that makes sense. It, it thickens the texture um, and, the, and it makes the tie a little less flexible, but it makes it stronger. Um, so that's why I go with, usually go with the slip stitch when I make built-in ties. I like to be able to chain all the way out, slip stitch all the way back, 
Um, and I find that works out pretty well. Nico's off. I see. Bye, Nico. Have fun. Nico, uh, Nico has to go because Nico's Nico go. uh, has a hot date tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Lucky Nico. <laughs> We want to hear all about it, Nico, when <laughs> when you get back. Next live stream, we want all the details. We'll have to age restrict this uh, this live stream. Have <laughs> fun, Nico. Oh, my gosh. Great. Now she's going to be thinking about that all night, and, she'll, and, her, and her date's going to be wondering why she's constantly giggling. And then going, no, no, it's not you. Sorry. I, uh, I know these weirdos across the, uh, across the planet. <laughs> I know these two weirdos from Canada. I just, I can't get them out of my head. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to end this date early. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> all right. I've slip stitched in each chain all the way back across. You can see that that's about, when I stretch it, it's, um, it's got some flexibility. And I can definitely tie a nice little bow with that. It's about 30 centimeters or an inch. Um, and that was using 47 chains. So I think that works for me. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. When you get back to your kerchief, you want to slip stitch back into the same space, that little space where you left from. So you chained out from there, you're going to slip stitch back into the same space. And now we're looking, oh, isn't that pretty? Look at those stripes. Oh, that looks so nice. We are going to work down the first short side towards the bottom point. We are going to work a seven double crochet um, scallop stitch. So we skip over the block. We find the space between the blocks. So one block will have your double crochets all kind of going up and down. The next block will have all your double crochets going side to side. So you're looking for the spaces in between those blocks. They're very easy to see. You just kind of pull it apart and it's the space where there's a break between the stitches all going in one direction and then all going in the other direction. So we've slip stitched into this space. We're going to skip over top of that first block and work seven double crochets right into the space. So there's no splitting of stitches, just seven double crochet all into that space. And my yarn is about to go from peach to yellow. So I am going to get of that color in here this is this is going to be so pretty i'm going to end up with a peach and yellow border all the way around so seven double crochet all worked into that space between blocks jump over the next block find the space between the next block and the block after that and just single crochet or slip stitch i guess i'm going to slip stitch let's slip stitch we'll keep that slip stitch that'll make the scallop even bigger so if you slip stitch between between your double crochet fans you get a higher more pronounced scallop if you single crochet between them it's a little less pronounced of a scallop so i'm going to slip stitch in between my seven double crochets and that will give me a much more pronounced scallop skip over the next block find the space seven double crochet into that space that creates my next scallop So that's seven double crochet into that space. You can really see that one. Jump over the next block. Here's the next space. I'm going to slip stitch into it and that will make a, that kind of anchors the scallop on both sides. You can really see that now. And it creates a nice pronounced scallop. So slip stitches in every other space between blocks, seven double crochets in the space between blocks in between so you alternate seven double crochet in a space slip stitch in the next space seven double crochet in the next space slip stitch in the next space kind of keep alternating and you get a nice little scallop pattern going really Darren? so people apply get an interview and then just don't bother showing up wow Nobody, nobody's, maybe they've got multiples planned on the same day. I don't know. Seven double crochet, skip the next space and slip stitch. And I'm about to go from peach to yellow. Oh, this is so pretty. 
skip the next block, seven double crochet into the next space. You finally got the CTC. Oh, Mia, I'm so happy to hear that. We've got a we've got a couple of tutorials using it, um, but sometimes just kind of listening to somebody work away at it helps. That's that's how I like to do it. <laughs> Oh, Krista has a sore neck too, Mr. In Stitches. It's not just me. It's not just you. We should have a poll about Nico. But Nico's not here to enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I read that. I love that idea, Sandy. But if Nico was here, I would absolutely go for it. <laughs> we need Nico to take part. We well, you know it. what? We'll have a poll about Nico yeah. next stream when we all harass her about her date. Yeah. We're just gonna we're just gonna dogpile on Nico and be like, <laughs> we wanna know how it went. That sounds good. Yes. Looking forward to that. We want all the details. All the deets. Yes, and we will age restrict the live stream. <laughs> Would it be difficult to request the timestamp at the start of doing the ties? Not at all, Joanne. Excellent idea. I will um, endeavor to do that. I think all I have to do is find the timestamp. Once this becomes a finished video, I just have to forward through to the timestamp. Actually, Mr. Insitches, how long have we been we've been um, streaming? Uh, we've been uh, live streaming for an hour and a half. Okay, so I just have to remember that around the hour and a half mark, I can go start looking for it. I go, I, I think sort of, we just put the, um, I think we basically just put the time in the description box. Oh, can we do it in the description it. box? I think that's how it works. Okay. So that's what we will do. That is a great so idea. up to the ties. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I think I'll break it into a handful. We'll do the start of the actual pattern, then the, the flattening of the edge, then the first ties, and then the scallop border. I think I'll break it up that way. Just so if you need to pop back in later and jump through it, we'll have that available for you. That is a great idea. I will try to yeah, remember to do idea. that going um, forward. Thank I you, I would Joanne. just like to shout out that you are doing an absolutely beautiful job. Oh, thanks. Man. I love the um, the pink edging. Oh, like and that, because it's that self it really it looks so delicate and dainty. It does. You know? It's so delicate Aww. and pretty. I know. I can't wait to wear this. Aww. It's soft. Now I have to take you out on a date. Yes, you do. I don't know if I can afford you. <laughs> I only like Oreos. <laughs> I guess I've already prepaid. <laughs> all right. So I've come all the way down. Um, I've, I've anchored my last. So here, just in case um, you wind up when you get all the way to the bottom of your um, short side when you're working this little scallop stitch there's two ways to go about this so if you did an even number of rows you're going to wind up with your anchoring slip stitch for your scallop in the bottom point that's fine you just turn around and start the project like the, the scallop pattern all the way up the other side you'll just have a little slip stitch at the bottom point if you made an odd number of rows in your kerchief like me you're going to slip stitch to anchor your second last scallop in the space just before you get to the bottom point which leaves you with the bottom point this is where our little tail is this is literally where we started that's our first chain from the whole project when you get down here you can work yourself a scallop into the bottom so right into that bottom point above your tie you can work seven double crochets and if that doesn't feel like enough work nine this is how you bend the scallop stitch into a border that suits the kerchief you made. So there's seven double crochets for me. Oops, come back here, you. There we go. And I think that's enough. I don't think I need to go with nine. If I go with nine, it'll be a little bit bigger, but I think I'll keep the consistency of the seven. And then I turn it working up the other short side I'm going to leave my tail out and weave that in later so that it's inside the same colored uh, stitches and then I just skip the next block slip stitch because that's the next thing I do that anchors my little bottom oh that's so cute <laughs> anchors my little bottom scallop which looks like a little a little dormer window 
And then it's the same thing. I skip up to the next space and continue with that seven double crochet scallop pattern. And it will be an exact mirror image of the other short side. And I'm hearing, you... um, I, want, I would like to change the sub subject sure. to something much more important. Uh huh. I'm hearing a lot of talk about lemon Oreos. Lemon? Um, and I would like to know if anyone in Canada has seen them because I have never seen, everyone in the chat is talking about them and I've never seen lemon. I think I've seen um, mint, but never lemon. So if anyone else from Canada, can you tell me if you've seen lemon Oreos in the grocery stores? And follow up question, is this lemon chocolate? lemon filling in a chocolate wafer, lemon filling in a vanilla wafer, or an actual lemon flavored cookie? Because I am now extremely interested in these lemon molds. Like, I'm ready to leave right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm ending this stream. I gotta go find these lemon Oreos. Lemon Oreos. We, we lemon, tend to I'm... just like I tend to just see uh, regular double stuff, which is pretty much the same, and then um, occasionally like mint or if there's like a Halloween special or something. Or vanilla. I think I've seen vanilla. Oh, look at that! They're lemon in the middle. Oh yeah, we have vanilla Oreos. Yeah. So the the cookie is a vanilla. Um, so it's lemon inside, but it's a vanilla wafer. Lemon inside. But a vanilla wafer. Uh, okay. Now, is the wafer thinner than the typical Golden Oreo? cookie with a lemon filling. Hmm. Limited time deals lemon in lemon. Okay, so I would like a full lemon flavored cookie because I love lemon. For all you uh, Italian descendants out there, limoncello is one of my favorite liqueurs. I love limoncello. I love, I love it. I love anything flavored lemon. Princess Francis says Walmart sells them. So we'll have to check our Walmarts. Um, but we do get like the, our selection of stuff is very different from the U.S. Yes. Although I will say this, very excited, spotted Funyuns for the first time in my life in a Canadian supermarket yesterday. Funyuns. Charlie's from Canada, and and Charlie says that they they've be seen them in grocery stores. So okay. I have never seen lemon Oreos. Me neither. But now what I'm. What is going on? I I have to have them. Oh yeah, Jada got really excited when she saw the Funyuns. Oh yeah, that like made my day. <laughs> she almost knocked me over, <laughs> and I was holding on to the grocery cart. It, it was uh, it's quite a scene. Yes, grocery shopping with the Institutes family is very chaotic. So speaking of lemon, I have transitioned to that lemon color. It is so pretty. I did manage to get every color in this cake into this kerchief, and I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. I'm just zipping up the side here. I love edging things with a scallop stitch. It is one of my favorite ways to finish off anything. A blanket, a wearable. I love scallops. And I love scallops. <laughs> so it looks like Walmart does sell them in Canada. It just, it might depend on the Walmart. Okay. Because you know how they kind of cater to... The location the community or the lo the um, mm -hmm. yeah the location like i was able to get um chicken and tomato flavored potato chips yesterday um and they're obviously marketed at uh, a more asian uh, palette because there was some kind of asian script on it i would forgive me i don't know what it was <laughs> i cannot recognize asian scripts all that well but i do know that it was asian and it was a chicken and tomato flavored so i got that because i i love potato chips probably more than anything um and i have to try crazy flavors when i see them and i like chicken and tomato so that's a new thing craziest potato chip flavor you've ever seen everybody please please in the chat right now Oh, and what's really popular we, uh, where you we, are? Uh, we tried a real crazy one lately, the um, uh, poutine. Oh, that's not crazy. That's amazing. That was 
insane. That was really good. Insanity. One, two, three, four. Okay, so there's my last seven double crochet scallop. I'm anchoring it in the top corner right here where I started. Um, that's I'm actually going to put it right in that single crochet that started the border row. So I'm anchoring it with a slip stitch. And now I have to do my second tie. Remembering I did 47 chains for this tie. I'm going to do 47 chains for this tie. There's 47 chains, fried chicken, baby back ribs. Oh my gosh, that was so good. Dill pickle, yeah. Old Bay seasoning. What is that, Natasha? What's in Old Bay seasoning? Hedgehog flavor. Uh, Catherine, do you want to tell us what hedgehog tastes like? Hedgehog? <laughs> do you get little, like, needles all over your mouth? <laughs> Maybe that's what it does to your mouth. Yeah. I've never heard of hedgehog or Old Bay seasoning. Uh, my sister-in-law loves dill pickle the most. That's her favorite. I My favorite is sour cream and onion. That is my absolute favorite, but I will try anything because I really like, um, I just I just really like the different flavors they come up with. I'll try anything, but if you really want to be my friend, <laughs> sour cream and onion are my favorite. <laughs> Plate and nachos, yes. Potato salad flavored chip, oh yes, Deanna. Oh, that sounds good. Potato Ooh, salad. I that love ketchup like, flavored. That makes sense. Ketchup flavored is very, um, very popular up here. And I love the roasted chicken and, and gravy, Ro Joanna. That's roasted another one that's really good. Roasted chicken is one of my favorite flavors, Old but Bay. we don't we don't see it often. Old Bay is used in a lot of Creole or Cajun recipes or seafood. Okay, so is it a bit spicy? Maybe a bit tomatoey. I know in uh, in the in the UK they've got shrimp flavored, or they call them prawn flavored chips. I love those; those are good. Old Bay is on the East Coast. Saw it in Baltimore. Old Bay. Well, I'm gonna have to go looking for those. Nacho cheese Doritos. Yeah, Mr. and Stitches loves the nacho cheese Doritos. My absolute favorites are the. Um... Anything sour cream and onion. Brittany agreed. Sour cream and cheddar, amazing. Uh, sour cream and cheddar. I love the sun chips. Yep. Um, the ch harvest cheddar sun chips. You know what, Kathy? I used to like sour of salt and vinegar, but I can and I still do, but I can only eat a few because my whole mouth kind of explodes. <laughs> Old Bay is spicy and put on crab. That sounds so good. Hmm. We make a hedgehog in Australia, but it's a chocolate slice. Oh my gosh, that sounds good too. Hedgehog, that's so cute. Hedgehogs are so cute. Nacho cheese Doritos. Yeah, nacho cheese. It's because it's like it's cheddar, but with like a little bit of spice. I like that too. I like a little bit of character in my chips. Just finishing the last tie here, and this will be one finished kerchief. Oh, what a lovely thing to make on a rainy Thursday afternoon. Here we go again, making everyone salivate during our live stream. I love talking we about food. We always end up talking about food on these crochet live streams. Because food is fun. Food is fun to talk about. It's fun to eat. It's fun to think about. It's fun to cook. It's fun to eat. All right. And I'm finished with my second tie. I'm going to slip stitch back into the same place that I chained out of. Let's get this little guy, give him a stretch, smooth out all those chains. And that is it! Applause! I snip my tappity, yarn, tappity, tappity, tappity. fasten off, and I'm going to weave in my tails. I should have two of them. So one up here by the tie, and the other one back here. I'll get this one in first. 
So I'm going to weave that mint in alongside some of the other minty stitches. Kind of going around a little corner and then I'll double back. Oops, come here you. There we go, that's in. And now I will weave in this little tail. It's yellow, so I'm going to put it underneath some of the yellow stitches. I'll go with these double crochets here. I like to get my needle wiggled through everything first before I bother to slip that tail through because the eye is nice and large, but it means that things can just fall right back out again. So there we go. I'll go down to the next one and then I will double back. I'm a contender for the Taste of Home Chef Contest. Speaking of food, what is that, Deanna? Deanna says, it's so pretty, Jada. You're gonna have to give us a real nice slow pan close up. I will. Let me just get my. I love the I love the way the colors uh, changed up there. You even went you even got to a yellow. Yeah, I I got all of Very the colors pretty. in the wildflower box. Okay, so there we go. Oh my gosh, oh oh it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, nice. Karen cotton ripple cake in the color sun um, wildflower. Absolutely beautiful. I've got sunny little yellow here. I've got the gentlest, palest peach over here. I've got that pretty kind of watery blue on a rainy day color here, kind of a gray blue, and then this lovely mint. Oh, I love it. I love how the ripple yarn creates a really unique texture in that corner to corner stitch. I love the way it feels. This is such a nice feeling cotton. I will be buying more of this for sure. Nice and soft, got a little bit of a stretch to it. My ties are nice and long. I'll be able to tie that on nice and tight around my head. Oh, that color is so cute. All right, this can't be a live crochet along unless I add a little something to it. So I'm thinking I'm going to crochet a flower that I can add or take off. So I'm going to make it like a little flower, removable flower pin, so that if sometimes I just want to wear this as I keep my hair out of my face, I can. And other times I can add like a little decorative flower to the side just to give it a little extra something, something. Um, so I'm going to use the same yarn and I'm going to crochet a flower. Oh, this is so cute. Nothing difficult. Uh, we have a bunch of flower tutorials, so I think, what will I do? Something really simple. I'm going to, maybe I'll base it off the daisy. So I'm going to start with a cinch circle, chain one to secure. Shall I go with the single or the half? I think I'll go with the half double crochet. So we just made this daisy for our daisy hairband tutorial, and I'm kind of obsessing over the daisies but I'm going to not change colors. So this is just going to be one solid colored flower. So if you ever want to make our daisy without actually changing colors, this is how you do it. So you start with a cinch circle, chain one. Chain one doesn't count anything, it just secures your circle. Eight half double crochet into the circle. There we go. Then I cinch the circle shut and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first half double crochet to secure. Now, normally this is where I would fasten off. Oh, is that the top of the first one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope. This is the top of the first one. It's hiding. Sometimes it gets pulled down the side. 
Let me get my hook under there. Occasionally it's tight. Got it. All right. That's the top of the eighth or the first one. So normally I would say this is where you fasten off uh, for the yellow center, but I'm just going to keep going right where I um, joined. I'm not changing colors. And I'm going to make eight little petals. Um, so I'm going to chain two and or three. Do I make these tall petals or short petals? Oh, let's try one. Chain two and two double crochet in the same place. Let's see if this is tall enough. Chain two and join with a slip stitch. Oops, come here, you. Too short a petal. All right, I'm going to opt for the double or the treble crochets, I should say. So pull it back to my join. I'm going to chain three and then work two treble crochets, one or two. I don't want them to be too thick. One. Hmm. You know what? Maybe just one treble crochet. This is ripply yarn after all and a little bit thick, so I don't want it to be too wide. Hmm. Maybe it does need it. Designing on the go. I'm going to work two, so a chain three and two treble crochets into the same place. And then a chain three and a join with a slip stitch. And that will be my first petal. There we go. That looks okay. All right. I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch and chain three, two treble crochets into the same place. Chain three and slip stitch into the same place. So everything's worked into the same stitch. Yeah, that's going to be cute. That's going to be cute. Fireworks Oreos. They usually come out on the U.S. around the 4th of July. Debbie, I've never seen those. What does a fireworks Oreo taste like? Trina, Tim Tams. Aren't those cookies? That sounds familiar to me. Yep, 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 that's going to be cute. One, two, three chains, two treble crochets into the same place. One, two, three chains, and a slip stitch all into the same place. That anchors my little slip stitch into the next stitch. Is that true that the fireworks um, have pop, Oreos have pop, ro pop rocks in the cream? Because that is awesome. Is that what makes them? I would love that. That sounds amazing. <laughs> we definitely do not get those here. No. Never seen those here. No, never seen those. That sounds cool. I'm missing out here. Trina answered my question about the Tim Tams. Did she? Yeah, what are Tim Tams? There are so many varieties now. I left Australia 20 years ago, but when I went back, so many new ones. Okay, are they cookies? They must be cookies.
chain three, two treble crochet, chain three slip stitch, all worked into the same stitch along the core or the center of the flower, slip stitch into the next stitch and repeat. Chain three, two treble crochet, chain three, and slip stitch all into the same place. Pull out on all those little flowers. That's cute. That is cute. It needs like a little button or something. I will snip my yarn. I'm going to leave quite a bit. Fasten off. And then I'm going to take my yarn and just weave it through a few stitches so that it's kind of in the middle back of the flower. And I'm going to attach a button. Wraith Rio says Oreo now has gluten-free cookies. It does? Yeah. Ooh. I'm uh, going to have to get those yes. for my wife so that, that she doesn't eat my stash. <laughs> those are now on the buy list. They're going to get they're going to be put on the list for sure. I'm going to look for them next time. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to grab my bucket of buttons. I'll be right back. Into the cupboard. <laughs> Aunt of Angels says, I gained five pounds just reading all of this. <laughs> yes, me too. I've noticed my uh, my spare tire has increased a little here. <laughs> Poof. All right. Um... Let's see here. Um, that might make a nice center. Mm, that's too dark, but not bad. Uh, that's a bead. That's kind of fun. That's close. It's got a big hole in the middle of it. I might use that. Ooh, oh, that's orange. That's just not quite right. But it kind of has a neat... A fat, hmm, that's a contender. I know it's not, I know that orange doesn't show up anywhere inside the, inside the kerchief, but I like that the texture of it kind of looks like the texture of the corner to corner and the yarn. So I'm going to keep that one to the side. Okay, what else, what else, what else? There's a green one. That's kind of boring. There's yellow, but it's yellow on yellow, so maybe not. Where's green? Meh. No. Nope. Mm, that's pretty, but I think the hole's too small. Um, there's purple. No. Ooh, 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 oh, that's a maybe. That's got a small hole, but I think I could do it. That's kind of cool. Ah, that's a contender. Uh, what else have I got? What else have I got? Let's see here. That's two. Big ways. shout out to Luann for the membership milestone. That's pink. Luann, Luann has Hello, been a everyone. member for 42 months and says, Hello, everyone. Wow. Thank you, Luann. Nope. Nope. Too orange. For anyone that is late, don't worry about it. This video will be archived on our channel and you can always watch it again from the beginning. Yes. Uh, put these guys away. This is just one of my buckets of beads or buttons I should say not beads buttons I've got another bucket of buttons these are my real odds and sods I just thought it might be nice to put a button in the middle of my little flower which is not going to be permanently attached to the kerchief I think I'm going to I'm going to sew like a little safety pin to the back of it so I can just attach it if I want because I just think this would be so cute like along the side I want to keep kind of a flat profile um, but I don't want to permanently attach it. I think that might be, well, I don't know. 
Oh, 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 what about that? That's not bad. Maybe, yeah, maybe I should go with something. That, oh my gosh, that's the same peach. <gasps> 80s, 80s buttons. It's the same peach. Oh my gosh, I have to get one of those off. Do you guys do this? Do you have like buttons that you kind of keep all together by stringing them on wire? As long as you don't poke yourself, it's a pretty great way to keep all your buttons together. There we go. Put that to the side. We have a few suggestions here for a medium pink or a mint. Mint or medium pink. Great suggestions as usual, everybody. Let's see here. That's very clear. That's an absolute bang on mint. Look at that. You almost can't see it. <gasps> it's not maybe strong enough. It's a bit clear see-through. But um, yeah, maybe needs to be a bit stronger. Maybe a medium pink. Mm. Mm. Hmm? It's got a little, little fleck of something on it. Somebody else's button. <laughs> that is pretty much bang on. Look at that. Ha uh ha. -huh. That's a contender. I like that. It's kind of a nice big wide flat button too. Uh, let's see. small it's a little too liney too lime green don't want lime green i want mint mint i don't think i have a lot of mint buttons at least not in this batch oh gosh ginger thank you ginger thank you for picking up a pattern in our etsy shop oh that's nice that pink that's look at this this pink is like it's like a it's like a a brushed button. Charlie like it, asks, is the pink is the is the pinkish color does it look like a pink or does it look more like a peach? So this is what I would call a peach, and this is what I would call a soft pink. And I'll same thing this is a soft pink. I'll let you guys decide. Um I'm gonna say this is kind of a it's a peach pink. It could really go either way. I like all three of these um and i kind of like the idea of the middle being pink i don't really have a decent um mint because i agree that would be really good like i've got that's nah, too green <laughs> nope that's a bit too lime it's a little close to yellow what about this nope any mint? Any mint? Just this one. Just this, this, uh, I've got two of them. This is exactly the same color mint, but it's kind of a clear see-through button. So I feel like it loses the power of it being mint when I put it with the yellow flower because that mint is just, it's just, it's a see-through button, which is kind of a bummer because it's the exact same mint. We're getting we're getting heavy requests for a poll here. Oh oh well, absolutely, we'll do a poll. Um, you pick out pick out at least four, uh, a max of four. Max of and four. And we'll do a poll for right. sure. So, um, hmm. Okay, I'm gonna say no to this. Ah, uh, no. Okay, I've got, I think that's, that one's got a scratch on it, so I'm going to say no to that one. I'm being picky here. Oh, that's way too red. What a great button, though. Oh, 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 oh my gosh. Okay, Ultimate Cottage Core Vibes. This is a, covered, a fabric covered button in a blue and white gingham. Can you hold it a little closer to the camera? Yes, please? I can. Ah, uh, yes. I can see the detail now. Uh-huh. So that's kind of amazing. <laughs> that's definitely a contender. It's also got the same blue in it as the blue. So that's a contender. Okay. Um, and I think I like that better than this big thing because it's too bonky and I might whack my head with that. So that's out of the way. I want to go with a flat button option. 
Let me just do one last check to make sure I don't have it. That's a close mint. It's small. That's nice. It's the exact same mint. That's exactly the same. It's just that, does it stand out enough? You know what? It's still a contender. Okay, that's enough. That's five buttons. How many options do we have? Four? Uh, four, yes, four options in the pool. Okay, so I've got to narrow down my pink and peach options here. Um, okay, so first things first, we're going to narrow down the peach. We're literally narrowing it down. <laughs> oh, the one that made me sing, Natasha, you're right. <laughs> Everybody's liking the gingham. I think it might end up being the gingham. Okay, you know what? Three, three options in the pool, sweetie. Uh, mint, the blue gingham, or I'm one ready. Of... You're ready? The mint button? You the... found a mint? Yeah, I've got a mint one here. Oh, okay. We can't tell from, like, the screen. Can you hold it a little closer to the camera? So that's a mint color. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but... It's literally... I will, I will take your word for it. Oh, when you actually, when you put it there, I can see it. Yeah. It's exactly the yeah, mint. Yeah, it's almost exact. Okay. So, mint... The blue gingham, which matches the blue and is, like, so incredibly cute. I mean, hello, gingham. <laughs> or one of the pink ones. How the heck do you spell gingham? It's G-I-N-G-H-A-M. Gingham. Gingham. And then gingham. I love... Gingham. Got it. And what was the third? Or one of the pink ones. Actually, pink or peach, because I've got one peach and I've got two pinks. And if pink wins, we'll decide which pink one it is. Um, I'm already okay. Starting... So I got a mint, a blue gingham, yep. a pink, and a peach. Yeah. Yep. That's that'll do. Let's fire that pole into the. Uh... Oh, I love buttons. So this is perfect. This is perfect. These are both perfect. This is the only outlier, but it's kind of nice because it's got like this shiny, like it's, it, it captures the light. Like it really is, it's, it's a, got a bit of a dome to it. So it's really got a neat reflective kind of aspect. Ah, buttons. Okay. Uh, we will let everybody vote on that. Let's get to at least a hundred votes. Um, I'm going to clean up my buttons. So it's going to get kind of noisy here for a second, guys, as I scoop up my buttons and dump them into my bin. But it's a, it's a little bit of ASMR button sound. <laughs> Gives cool. me an opportunity to crunch Oreos while you're making noise. Yes, you go ahead and do that. Oh, oh that's where that little bit of bracelet went. Hmm. What's it doing in my button stash? Look at how gigantic these buttons are. Look at these. They even have like a special toggle to like be attached on the back. Oh, these are so cool. what I would consider my pretty buttons. My pretty buttons are in the other bin. I just, I love these buttons for being utilitarian, you know, for little projects like this. There's always just the right button. That's a pretty green one. Ooh wee. Oh, oh, that's pretty. That's a really pretty green. Ooh. It's not the right green, but my no, gosh. No, it's not the right green, but it looks good. What a pretty green. Oh, it's got a belt buckle. Not really a button, but it can go in the button bin. Cast your vote in the poll above the chat, everyone. If you haven't yet, just click on the little blue bar oh. and then um, click Holy on your smokes. answer. Look, I found a diamond. A real diamond? I, don't, I doubt it, but wow. Well, I mean, it could, hello. It could pass. Jackpot. Look at that. Wee! <laughs> All right. 
right, almost done. Oh, there's another one. That one's actually in a, that one's even in a, in a little, like, it's clasped into a holder. Hmm. Where did these come from? Straight to the pawn shop. <laughs> Couple of little sequins. All right, here we go. So, I'm going to get a safety pin because I will be attaching a safety pin to the back of my flower so I can attach it and unattach it. That way it's in a detachable someone, flower. Um, someone in the chat mentioned that um, you could, if you really couldn't decide, you could just make a few flowers with the different buttons and then you could swap it out based on your outfit. An excellent idea. That is a very good idea. I might just do that. An excellent idea, uh, especially if I keep using this rippling yarn, I'm going to end up with different colored flowers. Okay, so how is the poll doing? Let's see here. We are at 101 votes, so I'll uh, end it then. You can end it. That's perfect. I'm going to put my... I might need that. I might need my. My little sewing pin, in case I need that. All right. Blue gingham. Whoa, whopping win with 64%. Guys, I agree completely. That was easy. 19% for the pink, 8% for the peach, 7% for the mint. Let's do it. All right. Oh, so cute. Now, I think this might require sewing. Not a big deal. I don't think I can get this through. So that's fine. What I will do is I will use, I will just bring my yarn back through to the back and will I attach the safety pin with it? Sure. Why not? Okay. If you're going to attach a safety pin, I find it's helpful to unclasp it just so you know which side is the side that moves because that's not the side you want to sew but be careful when you're sewing it you don't want to poke yourself um, and then I'm just going to sew around it a couple around the the back non-bending clasp part just a few few times just remember when you're taking these little pins on and off to be gentle with them but this works just fine. I wonder if this will stay in thin hair, says Brenda. Well, I have pretty thin hair and I find mine stay on, um, especially if it's like a, a cotton. Plus you can sew it kind of tightly. Jada, you were so excited when you found the gingham button. You know what, you're Joanna, you're so right. I think it's kind of like, well, that was gonna be the one, you know? <laughs> Oh yeah, I always take the, if I'm getting rid of, if I'm throwing out a piece of clothing and it's got to be in pretty rough shape if I'm going to throw it out. Normally I donate stuff that I'm not going to wear anymore. Um, but if I, if I'm going to throw out a piece of clothing, I always take the buttons off. Always, always, always. Because A, they could be useful. B, sometimes buttons are the coolest part of an outfit or a coat. Um, and if, if I, if it's, you know, if I'm really looking to just kind of keep back as much as I can. I'll take the zippers out of things. I'll take the, the uh, patches. Uh, if there's a logo I like, I'll take the logo out. Like if there's embroidery on it, I'll, I'll really take a thing apart if I'm going to throw it out. So all I'm doing is just making a little casement um, for my Oops, maybe I'll go back over here. Just to keep that safety pin from moving around, and it will. And it'll lock it on the back nicely. That's not going to go anywhere. 
Okay, it moves around a little, but that's all right. That gives you some room to maneuver when you're trying to un unclasp it or clasp it. Um, now I'm just going to not uh, one more. I got it. I got enough yarn. One more. There we go. Okay. Make a little knot. Through the loop from the other side. Pinch that down and then I'll just weave this tail in a little bit and then that should keep it from wanting to unravel on me. I will do up the pin so that I don't stab myself. Don't need that happening. Yeah, one more. One more set of stitches. There we go. All right, that's enough. Trim the excess. There we go. So there's my safety pin pin. That'll lie nice and flat and I can attach or detach my flower when I want to. And now I want to sew my button. I'm going to need to grab some thread. So there's a good sewing needle. I'm going to poke that right in the top of my flower. Let me get some sewing thread guys back into the craft cupboard. <laughs> Some nice boring beige thread. That'll do just lovely. Snip. I'm going to thread the needle and double the length of the yarn by just taking the two ends and knotting them together. There we go. And now. I'm going to anchor the sewing thread on the back of my flower and then come through the middle. There you go. And this covered button has like, it's kind of a bit like a, a metal shank, but there's a bit of fabric in here. So I'm actually passing my needle through some fabric when I sew. And I'll make sure I just go through that's about there through to the other side. Oh, that is going to be so cute. Okay. And while I'm here, since I'm sewing the button down, I'm just going to pass my needle in between the tongs of the sewing thread so that I can just may as well add an extra bit of sewing, a bit of strength to the, to the safety pin. You know, why not? I'm going to come back out the other side. Make sure this didn't twist on me. Get that as close to the underside of the button as I can. And then through the underside of the button. Not the easiest little button to see what I'm doing. But I'll work away at it nice and slowly. There we go. I got it through. Doubling up your thread gives you the opportunity to have to sew fewer times around, which is nice. And through the bottom, out the other side. Keep catching all my petals. There you go. go through the safety pin and I'm going to try and do this yeah, maybe three or four times at least three maybe four if I can do it there we go and I know you probably can't see it but I'm trying to get my needle to go through that little it's kind of like the underside of the button a bit of a shank Ooh. 
Ooh, it's going to get tight. There we go. I think I'm only going to be able to do it three times. It's pretty tight in there. But I think three should be enough. Bring it back to the underside of the flower. And then I will knot my thread on the back. And that will be that. Knot it a couple times just to make sure it doesn't want to go anywhere. There we go. And then same thing, I'll weave my needle through some of the yarn back here. Back of the flower doesn't really matter. It's not too messy, but it doesn't really matter. And that is that. Trim the thread, put the sewing needle back in the sewing needle book so you don't step on it. And now I've got my little flower that I can move around depending on if I want it on this side or this side or maybe hanging down the back, maybe hanging off one of the ties. Of course, you're not going to see the ties. It's probably going to be up here to the left or the right of my forehead or maybe just pinned on the bottom. Ooh, I, That's really I think cute. we're going to have to run a poll for this one. Because at first, I liked the top corner that where you were keeping it, because I thought, you know, when it's folded over your head, it's just going to kind of sit to the side of it. Yeah. But when you put it at the back, I'm like, mm, I mean, how cute that is that? That would super cute. Yeah, the petals of the flower are yeah. kind of enhanced Hanging by the scallop. Hanging off the back of your head, right? Yeah, and then it would hang down the back, and that would just be so cute. I think we need to do a poll. So up top or down at the back, everybody, keeping in mind that if you make it removable like I did, you can move it around. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's removable, so you can mm -hmm. put it anywhere you want. Bye, Summer. Drive safe, Summer. I'm, I'm like in the back, but it'll, it might change when I get it onto my head. Oh, this is just so darn cute. Oh, my gosh bottom bottom i just have to share this this made me laugh one of our wonderful channel members krista said that her husband came out of the office <laughs> and said are you still doing that jada thing <laughs> you still krista doing that told jada. him to get back in the office go back to, go back to work go back to work <laughs> yes i'm still that doing is the jada awesome. thing we are all doing that jada thing right yes. now even i'm doing that jada thing <laughs> Um, all right, we'll skip the poll then. We'll just, skip uh, the poll. just put in the chat what you think. Um, I'm seeing where, a where lot you of bottoms. like it best, top yeah. corner or at the bottom. I'm seeing. I'm, I like both. It really does depend, doesn't it? Backwards. Oh, that, that's a good point. Curated. It would keep it down. It would keep. It would help keep it from wanting to sort of flap around on you. I like it to the left to bring some yellow to that side. Yep. Yes. Yes. Good point. There's no yellow over here and that would make it even. Nice point. Look at all the smart people in here. The bottom weighs it down. Ah, oh, that little gingham button is so darn cute. Bottom looks great. Bottom, bottom, bottom. Well, you know what? It's movable because we've got it on a pin. So I can wear it here some days and I can wear it up here. And I think, I think putting it on the left does make sense because it balances out the yellow over here. Great idea. Oh, so cute. All right, um, just some quick notes on the project. When this tutorial becomes a finished video, so the stream stops, becomes a video, I will go back in and put some timestamps in just so if you guys wanna come back and see it all in full later, including the little flower, um, we will do that for you guys. Um, I think I think that's really all that's important. I think the, the yarn I used, the hook size I used, and the link to the original tutorial, if you want to zip through it faster, are in the description box down below. And this is kind of a, a fun spin on our daisy. So if you've made our daisy granny square, this is kind of a spin on that. Um, so if you want to make one of these, you can just follow along. We'll make sure the, the flower part is time stamped in the, um, in the oh, after the stream finishes too. So you can find the flower if you want to make one. And add a button to it or if you want to see it crocheted in a different way uh, with two colors as an actual daisy it's the um it's the first half of our daisy granny square pattern because our daisy granny square is actually based on a daisy flower as opposed to um 
a daisy with petals that join each other like some of the other squares are. Um, that one just kind of, I like, I like putting an actual flower in the middle of my, <laughs> my square. So that's kind of what I based that on. Um, anyway, this worked out wonderfully. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. I know it was a long one, but we did do the whole thing in one sitting, which is great. I love these one sitting pattern projects. Um, if you made it along with me, I'd love to see a picture of it. Uh, you can do that at the Etsy shop, pop into our Etsy shop and just click on contact seller and you can upload a photograph there or even just, I think it gives you the option to even take a picture if you're using your phone. Um, I hope if you're in the States, you have a wonderful long weekend ahead of you. We will see you here tomorrow. We won't be live, but we do have a video for you, a little, uh, little something to set up your weekend. And uh, we'll be back next week, Monday. We're going to be starting our Baby Dolls of the World crochet along. So we're going to be making our actual dolls live. We're going to be picking colors. We're going to be dressing them. Uh, we're going to work our way through that whole ebook, which is currently on sale in the shop. We'll make sure all the patterns that are currently on sale are up front. So if you do pop into the shop to pick one up, um, you should see them right up front. No necessary digging around in the shop. And a big thank you to everybody who popped in during the stream to buy one. Thank you. <laughs> um, this is our Summer Breeze uh, kerchief pattern. I love it in the fingering weight that we originally did it in, but I think I... I absolutely adore it in the, the ripple stitch here, this ripple cotton cake um, using the size three. I think I just, I love it because it's self-striping. I like how that really worked out. So very flexible pattern. You can really use up whatever's in your stash um, and make one for yourself or your friends or make up a few for your make-ahead stash. It's always nice to have a little something different in your make-ahead stash to pull out if you need a last minute gift. Mr. and Stitches, do you have anything you'd like to add? I think you covered everything perfectly. Um, I just saw a quick question come from Joanne. What time on Monday? Uh, probably around mid, roughly midday, roughly midday? Eastern, um, yeah. Eastern time. Yeah, um, but just keep, a, keep an eye on your notifications because Mr. and Stitches tries to get the stream going um, at least half an hour ahead of schedule. And then that'll give you the opportunity to pop in, click the notify me button when we go live. So if you're off doing other things, um, that'll be an option for you. We do try to do that. So we will see you guys tomorrow for a video for Friday. And um, failing that, have a wonderful long weekend. Stay safe and crafty. We will see you Monday for another live crochet along. We'll be working on dolls. And um, again, if you make one of these kerchiefs, I'd love to see it. Please pop into our Etsy shop and share a photograph. Have a great time, guys. We will see you tomorrow. We will see you Monday. We'll basically see you soon. So... <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining Bye. us today. Yes, thanks for joining us. See you later.